Why does it feel like society is pushing this narrative that we don't need each other? I made a video a few weeks ago and someone challenged me saying it didn't actually answer the main question. Why does society want you to hate men? They even called it pure clickbait. While I think the video was somewhat related to the title, I admit it didn't fully address the core question. I'm here ready to debunk this idea once and for all. Women are constantly told they are empowered, self-sufficient, that they don't need a man. And men are often hearing the same in reverse. But honestly, it's a setup. This idea that we can live completely isolated lives without each other isn't real. And it's not doing us any favors. Let's get into what's really going on here. You hear all the time women saying they are happier, more empowered without men, and men doing the same about women. But the truth is, we complement each other. We all bring different strengths, perspectives and support that can create a whole. If we isolate ourselves, we lose that balance. And guess what? That's exactly what society seems to want. Now, when we talk about society, who are we actually talking about? It's not some faceless entity. It's often the media, advertising industries and corporations that stand to gain something from your choices. And the truth is, they see financial gain in pushing a message of independence, especially to women who happen to be more active consumers. Think about it. A message that tells women you don't need a man isn't just about empowerment. It's also about encouraging independence that often gets linked with spending. Self-care, self-investment and self-sufficiency are important, but they are also heavily marketed. You don't need a man, you just need this product. <laughs> or treat yourself because you are worth it. It's empowerment with an economic twist. By promoting this narrative, they are encouraging women to invest in experiences, luxury items, and products that fill that emotional space. When you are told that relationships aren't worth the risk or that you should be happier alone, the natural response might be to seek fulfillment elsewhere. Industries like self-care, wellness and luxury goods are designed to cater to that, suggesting that material or personal experiences can substitute for relational ones. Instead of seeking support and happiness from a partner, the consumer cultures subtly suggest that you can buy that feeling instead. And it goes further. Brands market certain lifestyles almost like an identity package. Buy this, look like this, and you're empowered. Consumption becomes a part of your self-image, a way to affirm that you are independent and successful. But of course, it's a cycle. You buy into these products to feel independent, but in a way, it can make real relationships feel secondary or even unnecessary. This goes for men and goes for women. Society has made a habit of equating interdependence with self-worth, often downplaying the value of relationships. But we are social beings. Building healthy relationships doesn't undermine your independence, it complements it. The problem is, by pushing this idea that happiness is found outside of relationships, companies shift our focus to personal and material fulfillment, often creating a sense of isolation. Answering the core question, why does society want you to hate men or men to hate women? At the end of the day, it's profitable. If we are separated, if we are not building those strong interdependent relationships, we are left seeking fulfillment in other places, often material ones. We get weaker. And don't get me wrong, being independent and having self-worth is essential, but we are better together. Relationships don't limit us, they add balance and depth. Next time you hear you don't need anyone, maybe pause and ask who benefits from you being on your own. What do you think? Have you noticed how society seems to push this idea that we are happier alone? Have you felt the need of being alone? Drop a comment below with your thoughts. I'd, I'd love to hear if you have experienced this too. And if you found this video eye-opening, make sure to subscribe for more insights on relationships, self-growth and navigating the modern world. Also check the description for links to my guides on building healthy, fulfilling connections. Let's keep growing together. See you on my next one.